this is Britt Caswell with another example video. In this video, I'm covering example 3 from section 2-2 in the Savas Realize Algebra 2 textbook. In this video, we are looking at interpreting the graph of a quadratic function. So the first part of this example um, starts us with this formula. And this is showing the profit that a company earns from selling a headphones at different prices. And they want to know what the maximum profit the company can expect to earn. Alright, so here I have here I have a parabola showing that um, the graph of this uh, quadratic. And so our maximum profit, right, our maximum y value is going to be on the vertex right here. And so we don't know quite where that vertex is, so we have to calculate it. Now recall that the vertex lies on the axis of symmetry. Alright, so I can find my axis of symmetry using the formula x equals negative b over 2a. And then I'll, I'll use that x value in order to find the y value, which is my profit. So I need to start by plugging into this formula. So I have negative b. Okay, my b is 700 over 2 times a. My a here is negative 10. So here I have negative 700 over negative 20, which is 35. So what that is saying is that I will encounter my maximum profit if I sell each of these headphones for 35 bucks a pop. So that's kind of an interesting piece of information to help us with, uh, you know, if I was if I was planning out my company, right? How much I should sell for. Uh, so now let's go ahead and find the actual vertex. So I'm going to take that x value, okay, that 35, and I'm going to plug it in to find my y value. So I get y equals negative 10 times 35 squared plus 700 times 35 minus 6,000. Okay, this one we're going to need your handy dandy calculator for because those numbers are kind of big, right? So 35 squared times 10. So this is negative 12,250. Here, 700 times 35 is 24,500. Alright, so if I collect those like terms, I subtract each of those from the 24,000 that we have here. I get 6,250 bucks. Alright, so let's change colors. If the company sells the headphones for $35 a piece, they will make a maximum of six thousand two hundred and fifty bucks. I also want to show you guys something kind of interesting about this formula, right? This is written in standard form. So this C value is our Y intercept. Okay, it's somewhere like down here on the graph. And that Y intercept is is the amount of profit um, when the selling price is zero. So if we're just giving these headphones away, we're going to be out 6,000 bucks. All right, so that 6,000 in, in this case is the overhead cost for producing their headphones. Okay, so that's kind of an interesting idea. Uh, the other interesting idea is uh, these points right here, the zeros of the function at 10 and 60. We call these the break-even points. 
because if I sell the headset for 10 bucks or if I sell it for 60 bucks, I'm going to make zero dollars in profit. So what that's saying is that's where I'm, I'm breaking even between my cost and my return. So this is kind of a big deal for businesses, and it's often how many businesses determine how much they're going to sell their product for. Now this next example is a little bit on the ridiculous side for me. Okay, we are we're dealing with a water balloon that's being thrown from a window. All right, and here's the equation that they're using to model it. Uh, if you're taking physics, here's some kind of interesting stuff here. Um, this negative 16 is the pull of gravity, so how hard gravity is pulling it towards the ground in feet per second squared. Uh, this 160 is the initial vertical velocity. So how fast this thing is going up in feet per second. So they are launching this thing at 160 feet per second initially. And then this 50 is the initial height that they're launching it from. So they are launching this from being 50 feet in the air. So they're saying it's from a window, so they're, they're clearly in a building, right? Now the reason why I'm saying that they're probably launching this instead of just throwing it is because look at, look at right here, this maximum height that we're going to look for. That looks like it's what, at about 450? So, if the person's standing at 50 and they throw it up to 450, that means they were able to throw a water, a water balloon vertically 400 feet. <laughs> that seems a little, a little ridiculous for me. Um, I mean, I guess it's possible, but it seems, it seems a little outlandish for me. So it's good for you guys to check this stuff to see what the uh, what what interesting factoids you can find. All right, so let's go ahead, let's find the x value, okay, or our axis of symmetry. I'm going to use negative b over 2a, so negative 160 over 2 times negative 16. Uh, 160 divided by 16 is 10, divided by 2 is 5, and a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So this 5 that's happening here is saying that it's taking 5 seconds for this water balloon to get to its maximum height after they throw it. So now for the y value of the vertex, we're going to take that 5 and we're going to plug it into the function. Uh, so negative 16 times 5 squared plus 160 times 5 plus 50. Alright, so this y value is going to be telling me my height. So this first term, 5 squared is 25 times negative 16 is negative 400. next part, 160 times 5 is 800, and then plus 50. So negative 400 plus 800 is 400, and then an additional 50. So the maximum height of the water balloon is... 450 feet. Um, another interesting thing that people tend to ask is how much time it's spent in the air. So right here, just after 10 seconds, is when the water balloon hits the ground. So it was in the air for just over 10 seconds, which is kind of cool. But there we have it. So that's a couple of uh, very common application problems that we see with quadratic functions. Until next time.